everyone today i'm super excited to show you guys this video because these are one of my favorite toppings to put in navang so today i'll be showing you guys how to make these chestnut rubies that are so popular and all over southeast asia um, you'll see these chestnut rubies eaten in like a coconut syrup dessert uh, but today i'll be showing you guys how to make a ube colored um, flavored chestnut as well as using beetroot juice to color the chestnuts so i'll be doing two f colors today today i'll be doing them so that i can put them in my navang dessert and if you guys want to check out my navang dessert recipe video i'll put the link down below in that video i show you guys how to make the coconut syrup that I'm using in this video as well. Um, how to boil tapioca pearls. And then I also have a separate video on how to make sindel. So go ahead and check those out if you guys are interested. Um, I did make them separate videos just because it's kind of like a long process of how to do these. But in today's video, I'll just be showing you guys how to make these chestnut rubies as like an additional toppings to your navang. So let me know how you guys like to eat these beautiful and shiny and crunchy um, chestnut rubies and what colors you guys colored it before so yeah i'm excited to show you guys how to make these chestnut rubies just in time for christmas because these are beautiful and shiny just like christmas lights so let's go all right so all you guys need for this recipe are chestnuts these are canned chestnuts um, food coloring of your choice and then we also need tapioca starch basically just three ingredients um, and simple as that so before we start, we're going, we are going to go ahead and cut these chestnuts into small um, cubes and then we can go ahead and color it and then coat it with tapioca starch. Today we are going to use some fresh um, beet juice that I have made myself. I just grated a fresh beet and then added some warm water in there and let it soak for a good 30 minutes to release all that juice. Strain it and then um, squeeze out any excess juice and that's about it. So yeah, let's go cut the chestnuts. All right, so I finished cutting these into cubes. I separate them into two batches just because um, I'm gonna make two colors. So um, one is gonna be with the beet color and the other one I'm gonna make it ube flavoring. So I'm gonna use this today to flavor it. So the ube flavor. So this one's gonna be magenta um, pinkish red. This one's gonna be purple. Here's the beet juice that I made earlier. I'm going to add some of this in here just enough to coat and color it. Okay, so this one I'm gonna color it purple. I'm gonna make it the ube flavored color. I'm just gonna add in a few drops just to um, make it purple, not too much. A little bit goes a long way. And go ahead and stir this up as well. And then I'm going to add in some water water again just to cover okay and we're gonna let that soak and steep for a good 15 to 30 minutes as well so yeah we'll come back to these and see how they look like after all right so these have been sitting for a good 40 minutes um, they are nicely soaked and dyed really really good so you can see they are really purple here and then the magenta one oops this is the beet color one. So pretty. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna strain the liquid um, and then put it in plastic bags and we'll start um, layering it with tapioca starch. And then after that, we can cook it. So let's go ahead and strain these and come back in and put it in plastic bags. Okay, so I strained them and put them in plastic bags. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in about a half a cup of tapioca starch in each bag. So each bag here, go ahead and add in tapioca starch. Just enough to coat the chestnuts. Okay, and then we're gonna close this and leave some air for shaking. And all we're gonna do is shake this so that all the chestnuts are coated in a tapioca starch. Shake this up. So I'm gonna let this sit here 
for about 10 to 15 minutes so that the moisture soaks up all the tapioca starch. And then once it becomes um, not as white color and powdery color, we're going to add in more tapioca starch. So at this point, all we're doing right now is allowing the moisture to soak up all of the tapioca starch um, so that the moisture comes on the outside so that we can coat it with another layer of tapioca starch. This way we have a better chance of really, really pretty um, rubies. So yeah, we'll let this sit for a good 15, 10 to 15 minutes and we'll come back. All right, so it's been a good 15 minutes of just letting it sit here. So now we're going to go ahead and add in another half a cup of tapioca starch and mix it in. But usually if you let it sit, see how um, it kind of soaks up most of that tapioca starch. So we'll just open this up again and add in another half a cup in here. Close this up. And go ahead and mix it up again. So that's good. Taste that there again. And then do the same with the purple one. Add in flour. Close it up really good. Alright, let that sit there and we're going to do this for another 15 minutes, come back and check on them um, and then we can check to see if it needs another coating. If it does, we can do another coating. If it doesn't, then we can go ahead and start boiling these. But as you can see, some of these are clumping up together. We we'll go ahead and press some down so they don't clump up because it's going to be a really big ruby. <laughs> we're going to let this sit again for another 15 minutes and come back and check on them. Okay, so it's been another 15 minutes, so 30 minutes total, and we're going to do another layer of tapioca starch, and then um, I think we should be done. So I'm going to open these two and add just the last layer of tapioca starch, and then I think we're good to go. So I'm going to add just about a fourth of a cup in the last round. So these are good to go. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these out of the bags and put it in a strainer and sift out any of the excess tapioca starch and then we can start boiling them. It's going to be so pretty. So let's go um, sift these out and then we can start cooking them. So let's go. All right, so I have a strainer here. I have a little sifter and a bowl underneath. I'm just going to go ahead and pour in the pink magenta one. And then we're going to go ahead and sift out any of the excess powder that we're not going to boil in there. So this here we can discard it and put it in the trash. Um, but this here we are going to go ahead and start boiling them. So I have some water um, already boiling right here. Once it's boiled we can go ahead and add in the chestnuts. So let's go ahead and add those in. And do your best to make sure they're separated. And you'll just bring this back up to a boil and let it cook until it becomes translucent and fully cooked. And then we'll put it in some cold ice water and let it sit there and let it chill, firm up, and then it's ready to go. So it's as simple as that. So it's boiling pretty heavily. Just going to slightly stir this. It's not cooked yet just because I can still see a little bit of the white spots and the white raw um, tapioca starch. It's almost there. I'm give it another like five minutes or so and then I think we should be good. All right, so I'm gonna turn off the heat. This is nicely cooked. Um, and we are going to transfer and scoop this out and put it in some cold water. And we'll let that sit in the cold water. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I have some cold water in there. If you guys can, go ahead and use ice water. Um, but I'm just doing cold water just because I'm gonna rinse this again um, because there's a lot of starch. So I do a double rinse after it's um, chilled for the first round. So let that chill uh, for a good two minutes or so and I'm going to go ahead and rinse it another round 
uh, with cold water and let it sit and we can serve it. We'll do the same thing with a purple one. I'll just go ahead and cook that up and then uh, we can serve it up. Same process, just cook it up. Okay, so I finished cooking the purple one. I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing and just let it cool down in some cold water. And then I'm gonna rinse it another round and we can start serving it. All right, so now we can actually serve these. So these are nice and cooled and done. You can see here. It faded a little bit um, with the red color, but it's still really nice and pink. Make sure you keep this in water or else it's gonna stick together if you don't add water to it. Here is the purple version one. So pretty. So here I have a bowl. I'm just going to add in about one spoonful. I'm gonna add about, about two spoons of this. Maybe one spoon of that. So at this point you can just go ahead and add coconut syrup in there and you can eat it like that. But today I'm going to add in some sindal that I've also made. So these, the sindal, I have a recipe for it if you guys wanna check it out. And then to that, I'm gonna add in some tapioca pearls that I colored it kind of like a golden yellow. That in there as well. And then all we're gonna do is add some coconut syrup that I made. I also have a recipe for this if you guys are curious. Go ahead and pour that in. And we can go ahead and stir this up. And this is ready to eat.